freestyle travel. Hey everybody, Kenny Flannery here as always, and I'm coming to you from Pennsylvania in the United States. Uh, this episode I'm going to tell you mostly about uh, tripping through Iceland, doing a hitchhiking lap around the country, which was uh, pretty scenic, pretty fun. Also got a ridiculous story about the airport leaving, uh, getting delayed by a day, getting pulled off the plane after it already gotten on there, uh, dealing with airport security, dealing with police, <laughs> having to admit to uh, getting rid of human remains even, <laughs> I'm serious, uh, just to get out of the country. Absolutely uh, fucking ridiculous actually. Uh, so I got that story for you, and then uh, yeah, all the, the good times hitching around, which uh, makes up for it, and obviously I'm here in the US, so the Iceland airport thing uh, works out, as you'll see. But yeah, got that. Uh, we'll go back to Austria and start from there, and then bring you all the way back to the US, where I've got some uh, stuff going on. Maybe a trip hopping collective here in a little while. Uh, every time I bring up trip hopping, kind of bring up uh, Magic Mind, I've been mentioning on the podcast for a little while now, which is a uh, mental performance shot like a two ounce shot you can uh, take alongside your coffee or even without it, uh, which helped me get back into the coding mindset uh, last year when I started uh, getting trip hopping going. Getting coding again, uh, super effective little shot you can take once a day. And uh, the good thing about it is the more days in a row kind of that you take it, the uh, better it gets, kind of just uh, compiles. So unlike coffee where you, I don't, I don't know, get like sort of a coffee addiction perhaps and uh, also just a crash that coffee can kind of do. Uh, this Magic Mind stuff does not do that. It's got a bunch of natural ingredients. Uh, they're really thoughtful about that. It's always worth uh, looking into every time I look, I kind of notice something new. But you know, they've got a uh, matcha tea in there and nootropics, adaptogens, uh, lion's mane, mushrooms kind of stuff going on uh, that just helps you focus and uh, stay focused for quite a bit. And like I said, sort of has this compiling effect as the uh, days and weeks go on, if you uh, keep taking it. So they even do a subscription thing where you can, you know, they'll just keep sending it, sending it to you. So you don't even have to think about it. It just shows up and uh, you're good to go. I've got some friends and uh, people on who've listened to me uh, on the podcast mention it and they've done that and uh, yeah, they enjoy it. So check that out. If you'd like, they gave a code to me that I can give to you to uh, save some money. If you go to magicmind.com slash freestyle show, and use my code freestyle show 20 freestyle show 20 uh, when you check out you'll get 20 percent off and that's pretty sweet uh, get it once or get a subscription and uh, i hope you enjoy it because it's worked out real well for me that's why i'm talking about it and speaking of a uh, trip hopping still yep uh probably by the next podcast i'll be announcing some dates of when that'll be going on so anyone who's interested in helping out with trip hopping, whether it's doing research, doing coding, uh, getting the word out, um, just contributing your own ideas. There's going to be something for everybody who wants to help out either in person, uh, likely in Arizona or remotely. So yeah, in the meantime, you can get on triphopping.com and create an account and just kind of check it out, see all the good stuff working on there, whether it's the AI uh, recommendations, what to do in your area or seeing how to get from A to B, whether it's hitchhiking or flying, uh, posting ride shares, see who else is hanging out live on the map, like me, hanging out right now in Pennsylvania. If you look at the map right now on Trip Hop and you'll see an orange dot, that is me trying to drink a beer with someone. <laughs> so if you're around, uh, let's drink a beer. Uh, I'll tell you where I'm going next, even though I don't know, so I just made that up. I'll tell you where I'm thinking of going next, and uh, definitely some places I shall be going. Uh, but yeah, let's jump back to Vienna, Austria and go over to Iceland and uh, <laughs> the bullshit at the airport at the end there. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Alrighty, yeah, so last uh, podcast episode, uh, a couple few weeks ago, whatever it was, I was in Vienna, Austria and sort of the, the idea was to get back to the US for as cheap as possible to a uh, do this um, trip hopping collective that'll be coming up, uh, see some friends and family skipping around and just figure out what's next. And the cheapest way I could figure to get to the US was gonna be via Iceland, just uh, 
I was actually using trip hopping my own app uh, to look for flights because I've I made the app in such a way that you can search like continent to continent for flights and uh, instead of airport to airport just flexible search like that and that's how um, I found the Iceland flights were pretty cheap just searching Europe to US uh, Iceland was coming up uh, but obviously I had to get to Iceland too so the cheapest flight to Iceland I could find from hitchhikeable Europe uh, was from Vienna, Austria. And I since found that uh, maybe could have gone to uh, Denmark actually and hitchhiked on the ferry. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to go to and from Iceland from uh, mainland Europe. It seems like it's possible to hitchhike the ferry because uh, somewhere in Denmark, I think. I, not positive, but it looks like uh, it's one of those ferries where they charge per vehicle, not per person. So if someone picks you up hitchhiking, it's uh, not like it costs them anything extra to let you... Uh, come across so eh, something to think about for the next time uh anyways i found the flight from vienna austria uh that's what brought me over there to austria coming from turkey where i'd been and through the balkans uh and yeah so last episode i was chilling in some park in vienna which is a pretty cool spot uh next day i walked to the airport I actually walked there it was like a four hour walk but i spent like you know uh, the morning and the afternoon doing that, just stopping here and there, checking things out, uh, breaking up the walk a little bit. And yeah, hopped on the plane and getting to Iceland was no problem, getting through security and all that stuff. Uh, the only thing that could have been an issue and ended up working out was um, I was getting in at like midnight, midnight 30. And I found a Be Welcome host, a guy who's actually hosted a ton of people on Couchsurfing, hundreds, in Reykjavik, who at the, the last minute, like a day or two before, said he could host me. Uh, so that was pretty good, but I had to message him and just be like, uh, <laughs> by the way, I'm not getting in until after midnight, and I figured I'd have to either sleep at the airport or kind of camp out somewhere, but he was super cool. He was just like, you know, show up at uh, 1 a.m., 4 a.m., doesn't matter, uh, ring the doorbell. He said he'd either be up because he's got like a random sleep schedule or he would hear the doorbell, so that made life a little bit easier for sure. Um... Yeah, and I'm kind of, so I was going to be in Iceland for a week. That was the time between getting there from Austria and a uh, flight to Baltimore, which is also, yeah, the cheapest flight to the U.S. was Iceland to Baltimore. <laughs> um, and I was uh, looking at just the weather in Iceland. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a lot of rain and snow mix and a lot of nights dipping below freezing. So I was trying my best to find hosts all over the island and at first it wasn't wasn't looking too good <laughs> and it's like ah, oh, with my sleeping gear uh, my sleeping bag and stuff i can kind of sleep down to freezing but I'm, I'm just surviving at that point you know and if it gets much colder i'm not surviving <laughs> i'm not even doing that uh so things things all came together bit by bit as you'll hear um starting with this guy in Reykjavik who said he could host me in the start and probably end of my trip so met him um yeah oh so getting to the airport got there like midnight or so i'm like all right i'm gonna hitchhike in the dark here <laughs> and sure enough 90 seconds after getting outside the airport i got a ride from these three romanian girls um going straight to reykjavik just popped in the gps exactly the address of where i was going and dropped me off so <laughs> couldn't have been easier and they just kind of set the tone for iceland hitchhiking wise uh, it was pretty easy the whole way uh, and yeah that, that worked out great i indeed showed up at uh like 1 a.m or whatever it was a dude's house he was awake playing video games and stuff and just caught up with him for an hour or so and um yeah he'd been up for like 40 hours just uh doing a little bit of drugs <laughs> um hanging out doing his thing uh playing games so yeah even though i went to sleep at like i don't know probably 3 a.m or something he was still up until like 9 a.m. right as I was waking up. <laughs> he was going to sleep. So I uh, yeah, woke up and got a shower and uh, poked around the city. Uh, not too much to see, honestly, in Reykjavik. Reykjavik itself is not like, a, it's an okay town or whatever, but a super, they had something called a botanical garden, but it was like pretty janky, maybe because of the time of year. <laughs> but just like, I don't know dry grass and stuff like that. It's like, all right. Uh, stuff's expensive. I walked by a brewery uh, and it was crazy expensive just looking at the menu outside. So I'm like, all right, I can't leave Iceland without going to a brewery, but that moment was not the moment for it. I'll get to that here in a bit. 
Uh, I was able to drink some decent beers around Iceland from the the shops. So they've got like one place called Vin Buden. It's a government run alcohol monopoly shop. Uh, kind of like Utah if you've ever been there, a little bit like that. So none of the grocery stores, no private liquor stores. You have to buy from these Vin Buden spots. And uh, you know, it wasn't horrible in there. I was getting uh, Imperial Stouts for like five, six bucks, which is kind of like US prices or anything, honestly. So, but yeah, the breweries themselves or bars, just stupid expensive. So um, yeah, walked around town, uh, caught up with him again for the night, actually stayed up pretty late with him. Uh, didn't get much sleep that night, uh, just chatting and drinking some beers and junk. And yeah, the next day, night I had someone to stay with in the south a guy who said he could host me uh, down there so the goal was to get down there before dark of course uh, by now I'd heard a couple things about things to check out I didn't really do much research or whatever in Iceland I've always heard it's beautiful a place to see the northern lights uh, just a beautiful place altogether but nothing specific but um, by that point I'd heard this golden circle area sort of in the middle ish of the country not far from Reykjavik was cool to check out so I'm like all right I'll just point myself there and see what I see and then uh yeah try to get to the south like I said before it gets too late uh, I got a ride from a few guys pretty quickly out of the city it was already like raining most of that day it was kind of raining off and on uh pretty cold you know but uh they picked me up got me to the the road going more center uh golden circle <laughs> area uh, some guy who'd been living out of his van for five years picked me up, uh, born and raised in Iceland. And then, uh, yeah, a British guy with his two daughters just on a vacation picked me up and took me to like this gigantic waterfall. I think it's the biggest waterfall in the country. Um, all the waterfalls are called Foss. I think Foss is the word for waterfall. So something Foss. <laughs> uh, if you take a look at my Instagram, Hobo Lifestyle, you'll see just a whole bunch of pictures, of mostly waterfalls <laughs> and some other stuff. Because there's a lot of it that, this week in Iceland. So, yeah, that kind of kicked things off. And uh, I was walking from there when this girl from Singapore picked me up. Uh, spent most of the day with her after that. <laughs> uh, this is kind of how things worked out in Iceland. So, she was cool. She's uh, been on some trips all over the place. Just uh, one week here, two weeks there, uh, whenever she gets time. Uh, this was one of those trips. And yeah, she was going in the direction I was going and, and also had a bunch of like stuff planned out. And she was also happy because she didn't have to bring her tripod out with her. <laughs> I could take her selfies for her <laughs> uh, as we stopped at uh, like one big waterfall again where you could walk behind it. There's kind of a cave behind it. Uh, in that same area, there's a place where you could walk through a crack in the rocks and there's a big waterfall and a cave back there. Stuff like that. Uh, pretty cool. Um, another gigantic waterfall close to where her hostel was. She was staying for the night. It was still kind of early-ish, so we went to this uh, Black Beach area and some other spots, and that's the Black Beach is where I had to part ways with her. So I was uh, kind of pushing the daylight situation. I uh, got a ride from, I don't know, four Europeans, or two Europeans and two Australians, two of which were kind of working and living there. The Australians were visiting. Anyways, they got me a ride to the road where an 80 year old woman picked me up uh, and she was going into the abyss <laughs> where I was going, kind of middle of nowhere. She was cool. She's lived in Iceland her whole life and different areas. So she was telling me just the history of uh, volcanic eruptions. And it was just sort of like a wasteland, a beautiful wasteland around that we were driving through uh, big lava fields that now uh, moss was growing on top of. Real cool looking, but totally unhospitable. So nothing out there as far as anything. <laughs> uh, if I had had to camp out there, it would have been tricky even just because of the volcanic rock situation. Um, but she dropped me off right uh, where I was going. So this guy who hosted me that night, he seasonally works at uh, this hotel out there. Um, and he has staff housing and that's where he'll sometimes host people for like one night. Uh, so yeah, I didn't, he was on shift, so he just kind of gave me directions on how to get into the staff housing and got to his room, which is cool. He's got a girlfriend there now, so when he hosts people, he just stays at his girlfriend's, uh, little pod. 
and yeah, had a plate of hot food he snuck over from uh, staff meals for me. That was cool, and I uh, crashed there for the night. Went to sleep kind of early, which was kind of a bummer because when I, w I went to sleep probably like 8 p.m., you know, nothing going on, and tired from the night before, and I woke up and I had mixed, missed a text from him at 9 p.m. that said, uh, if you step outside and look to your left, the uh, northern lights are kind of going off. I was like, fuck, <laughs> i never seen those in my life, you know? That's kind of one of the things I was hoping to see in Iceland. Uh, but the next night, it would work out. But I was kind of bummed when I saw that. I was like, damn, <laughs> missed it. So he came over actually in the morning and just chatted for like uh, 30 minutes, kind of heard his story. Uh, like I said, he's been last five years sort of working seasonally and then uh, hitchhiking kind of wherever he wants to during the rest of the year. Uh, working at this particular Iceland hotel the last three seasons. And last year he met his girlfriend there. She's also working there, bartending or whatever. So they spent the last year uh, hitching around and they plan to go to South America once this season is over and continue. Uh, so that was pretty cool, at least getting to hear his story. And then I stepped outside and it was fucking snowing. <laughs> like, all right, here we go. Into the snow and wind I go, uh, but I got a ride real quick within five or ten minutes from a van. Uh, also some Europeans uh, working there seasonally. Uh, the guy driving was from Sweden, the guy in the passenger seat was from Slovakia, and the girl in the back uh, was from Spain. So they do some kind of, I don't know, climbing or hiking guide thing through the glaciers. Uh, so they gave me a ride to the next junction where I got a ride from a Swiss woman who was on a little vacation, kind of doing the same lap that I was. So chatted with her, stopped at some goofy little waterfall, of course, and then she dropped me off at this real cool place, like a beach. It's called Diamond Beach, uh, covered in ice and stuff, just real cool looking. Again, I posted a bunch of these pictures uh, worth looking at, or just Google uh, Diamond Beach. Uh, and see the millions of other pictures people have taken. Uh, and then across the road from that was like a lagoon with a bunch of glaciers in it. Uh, that was real cool looking, just like that blue ice and just like, yeah, pretty cool to look at. Still raining. Uh, I got a ride from like a super Jeep out there. There's a bunch of like big old Jeeps, super uh, raised up, one of those. Guy who'd uh, grown up there and he was doing ice cave tours. So I just got to hear a little bit about that and uh, get to the next spot. And finally got a ride from a French couple who I spent the rest of the day with. Uh, worked out pretty good. And this was the one night where I had nothing uh, planned, no host set up. Um, I had someone in the north of the island, but I knew I wasn't going to get there this day. So it's a little concerned, but then just worked out absolutely perfectly. My friend out of the blue uh, saw I was in Iceland and knew how expensive it was and just said, uh, fuck it. And she uh, Venmoed me. Um, some some money for a hostel she's like if you run into a night where you need a hostel here it is and i was upon that night <laughs> it could not have worked out any better actually just pretty awesome to have friends like that you know uh super awesome because there's going to be a cold and snowy slash rainy night and the rain's the real killer you know the real killer but uh i survived and actually it was a really good night so yeah like i said i spent the day with that french couple just driving around stopping when we could seeing some things and um uh, they dropped me off in this eggelstadter not saying that name right but it's whatever the big town is in the east of iceland and sure enough there's a hostel and uh I had just enough money for my friend plus 10 bucks so i used the extra 10 bucks to get a, a beer and a frozen pizza uh, so that worked out real well. And sure enough, I just stayed up that night in the hostel and stepped outside and uh, saw the northern lights starting to go off. First time in my life. So that was pretty cool. I kind of climbed up on this uh, hill uh, in the town and uh, got a good view as it got a little bit more intense and danced around the sky. So that was awesome. <laughs> Always want to see those and just, I don't know, never have till now. So. Pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, and just had to keep it moving the next day. So I had a host I could stay with in Ackery for a couple days. So I was aiming to get there and see whatever I could see along the way. And once again, I like, latched on someone else's road trip. These two German girls picked me up just on a trip of their own. And they had a whole list of spots they were going to, going the same way I was going. So yeah, I spent the whole day basically with them. Uh, going to Dedefoss waterfalls or something like that, which was a big one we had to hike to, kind of an icy, slippery hike. Definitely worth it. Um, yeah, pretty big, impressive waterfalls, and then 
another set of waterfalls right in that same area. Just gorgeous. And then, I don't know, it's cool. Sometimes you get in these situations where it's like, uh, like that, where you're playing leapfrog with people and uh, there's other people road tripping and doing the same kind of things that you're doing. Uh, New Zealand, I kind of experienced that too, where it's sort of a 50-50 split of uh, travelers, tourists, and uh, locals picking me up. Uh, often going to the same place <laughs> I was going or some are even more interesting along the way. So good vibes, good times, and uh, yeah, just good conversation in the, the car as we were going through beautiful scenery and the snow and everything with them hearing about other trips that they'd been on and where they're planning to go and how this trip's been going, all that good stuff. So we went to, um, besides the waterfalls, some steamy areas where it's like, uh, you know, Yellowstone kind of vibes, uh, geyserish kind of stuff, uh, steaming ground, uh, volcanic areas, uh, more waterfalls, more driving around, hikes with sheep and all that good junk. And uh, they finally dropped me off at a junction. They're about to turn to their hostel. And I still had like 100 kilometers to get to Akareri, like an hour of daylight left. And it was, that was probably the coldest part of the trip, just extra windy, uh, snow clouds kind of closing in on me. Uh, I wasn't too worried just because how well the hitchhiking had been going, but uh, traffic was pretty light, not much. But finally, of course, someone stopped for me. Uh, dude has two daughters and a son. Uh, he was from Norway. They were all from Norway, but uh, I guess the older son and daughter had been living in Reykjavik for some years, and he just came to kind of pop in and visit, do a little road trip with them. So anyways, he got me to the, the house of my next host, uh, and this was a guy who'd hosted, I think it was like 1,077 people. Freaking crazy. 1,077 people, that's a lot of, a lot of damn people. Um, over the years, over the last like 10 years, mostly through uh, couch surfing. I found him on Be Welcome. He was cool, and I guess I missed him by like a year, uh, kind of, because he, he'd worked at the local brewery um, for like the last 22 years or something like that and only just uh, quit slash got fired like in the past year. And I guess before that, he just always had a mess ton of beer. Just, you know, the dented cans or the low fills, he would always have like a case of those to have on hand. So I missed that little smorgasbord of beers, but I think it was probably uh, some lighter beer anyway. It was Viking beer. It seemed like a weird brewery. Like they were also bottling Coca-Cola and um, Fanta and stuff at this brewery. and. I think beer from multiple different breweries, so it's probably just a hodgepodge of stuff. But uh, anyways, he had plenty to talk about and stuff and stayed up with him and uh, spent the next day just kind of walking around, checking out the small little city and hanging with him again. And then finally got moving the next day, uh, Mission Reykjavik, to uh, complete the trip kind of. And that worked out real well. I got picked up by a surfer dude first thing in the morning. Yes, he was going to surf cold ass day um and then i got a ride from a, a polish guy who'd been working in some dusty factory i'm not sure what they did but involved a lot of dust apparently <laughs> that's what he was saying um and he was going all the way to the airport so that was like a five hour ride um yeah just rode with him that whole chunk of the day and got back to reykjavik uh caught up with the same host i'd been staying with uh spent the night Another day wandering around the city, finally getting to a brewery. I was like, I have to at least pop into one, just see what the vibes are, even if it's expensive. Um, it was cool. One beer turned into two. Could have turned into a lot more, but yeah, fucking expensive. So got an Imperial Stout. Met some girl from uh, Oregon. Works at a brewery near Hood River. They're opening up a spot in uh, Portland. So just chatting with her, chatting with the bartender. Um... Had my budget been unlimited, I would have stayed there for another three or four beers, I'm sure. But it was good just to pop in there. Stout was good. The IPA was fresh. Happy days, you know. Um, yeah, one last night there. A uh, buddy went out and got a six-pack of uh, cheaper beers. So that was cool. Just uh, kind of a late night drinking and uh, bullshitting with him. And yeah, finally got up in the morning. My flight wasn't till like 3 p.m., but I'm like, since I'm hitchhiking to the airport and it's like a 40 minute drive away, might as well just get as early of a start as possible. So started hitchhiking out of town, got a ride real, real easy to the edge of town from one dude. And then um, two guys going to work in a van. 
were working uh, out that way near the airport, so they dropped me off directly at the airport. So I was there probably before 11, you know, so they're four hours or so before my flight. Plenty of time, got through security, no issues. And then this one shit started to get weird. <laughs> um, I was waiting for the international gates to open, and they finally did. So you go in and showed my passport, and it's like, oh, that's easy. Thought, <laughs> stamp my passport out of Europe, basically. And then um, as I was going to go through the next little turnstile, where I have to scan my uh, boarding pass, a woman asked to see my passport, showed it to her, and then she told me I'd been selected for secondary screening. Like, oh, great. <laughs> Wasn't super worried about it, especially because I had plenty of time, but you know, it's still annoying. Um, randomly be uh, selected for that. So it took me to a back room, told me to take my shoes off, take my electronics out, open up my laptop, hit the power button. She's swabbing uh, my waistline and my hands and the electronics and putting these little tabs into the machines. I don't know what they're looking for. Bomb making materials or something probably, I don't know. Uh, then she comes across my little bag of ashes <laughs> and asks, what's this? <laughs> uh, fair question. And I, I tell her that's my uncle. I've got like a very small amount of my uncle's ashes I've been traveling with for years, actually all over the world. Um, when he passed, the ashes were kind of spread around my family and I got like a small amount that, uh, yeah, it's just something cool <laughs> to travel with my uncle, you know? Uh, so I've had that. This has actually only ever come up one time in all my travels. You'd think maybe it would come up more in like a little plastic baggie that at a glance looks like heroin or something, you know? <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, only actually one other time going through TSA did they see the bag and ask what it was. And I said, uh, that's my uncle. And they said, okay, and kept it moving. That was the end of it. Uh, but not this time. This time it became a shit show. Um, the dude is like, uh, <laughs> he looked like deer in headlights for a second. I'm like, uh, say something, dude. He's like, yeah, you need like, um, uh, what do you need? Like, uh, documentation. <laughs> this needs to be in a sealed thing with, uh, documentation from the funeral home or whatever. He, whatever. He brings in his, uh, supervisor because he's not sure what to say. And then the supervisor comes in, asks if I have documentation. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just a tiny amount of ashes. I don't know. He's like, you're supposed to have this. He's like, all right, I'm going to let it slide this time. But in the future you need this stuff. I'm like, all right, well, that's good. <laughs> uh, so, you know, shoes back on, pack everything up. They uh, put a little sticker on my passport and then, uh, send me into the gates with the rest of the animals <laughs> and uh I'm like all right well that was you know mildly annoying but at least that's over and then i gotta wait another hour uh until my flight starts boarding uh flight starts boarding i get through i get on the plane find my seat 23e or whatever <laughs> you know and towards the back uh sit down between a couple people buckle up um you know headphones on just waiting for the flight to take off and everyone to get on the plane. And then uh, a lady comes up to me, asks to see my passport. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is strange. Maybe I've uh, sat in the wrong seat or something. Uh, she looks at my passport and she's like, uh, grab your stuff and come with me. My colleagues want to see you downstairs. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this? And um, now I'm walking like against the grain, you know, all these people still getting on the plane, putting their bags up in the overheads and stuff. And I'm trying to squeak by them and she's getting a little annoyed. I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> I'm moving as fast as I can and then get off the jetway and um, get back to where the gate was. And um, then they're like, oh yeah, because of what you uh, have with you, we can't let you on this flight. I'm like, oh, the fucking ashes? I'm like, the... <laughs> The dude said it was fine. I'm like, well, what's the deal? Do I have to like leave him behind? Which I'm not stoked about, but I'm like, if that's the option, like that's the fucking option. And she's like, no, it doesn't matter. Whatever, like you're, you're not getting on this flight. You can get on a different flight. Maybe that's up to you, but just like this flight, I'm gonna have to float you. She kept using that word. I will have to float you. And that's what kind of confused me. I was like, what? Um, as I was getting off the plane, like I, didn't, I wasn't even thinking about the ashes or anything. I was like, what is happening? Once you used that word float me at first, I was like, did they overbook the flight? I was like, that's actually not the worst thing. If they overbook the flight, that usually means they're going to give me money for a hotel room and some food and a voucher for another flight at some point. Put me on a flight later today or tomorrow. I'm like, 
I'm not in a hurry like that actually sounds all right but that is not what was going on she was <laughs> just saying i couldn't be on the flight um i could be on the next flight and i'm like well what, what is this <laughs> what is this like random punishment and like if this is something you guys were gonna do why didn't you do it two and a half hours ago when he first confronted me about this stuff you actually whatever fucking annoying let me get all the way on the plane seatbelt on buckled ah getting in the the zone ready for a long ass six hour flight but no um so i'm like well how do i uh how do i get a refund or change my flight or like I don't know, what's what's the move here and uh, who do i who do i talk to she's like you there is no like one to talk to she's like you can get on uh the website this is like play airlines by the way um i'd never heard of until i booked this cheap ass flight <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I'm like, you guys are wearing like the fucking costume. I can't talk to y'all anymore. No. So as soon as they got me like on the other side of the turnstile, it was like I didn't exist, you know? <laughs> they didn't give a fuck about my situation. Uh, and I walked away. I almost thought I was going to get escorted out of the airport or, you know, they're going to like grab the ashes and I don't, I don't know. But no, like once I was on that other side of the turnstile, they just didn't, didn't give a shit. <laughs> so... I walk back to find a place to sit down. I look at the board of flights that are leaving for the rest of the day and all the flights, international flights are, um, you know, they're all about to leave in the next hour or two uh, on my airline and every airline. So I tracked down the website. Um, and all they had was a WhatsApp number that you could text, not even like someone you could call this freaking airline. Uh, so I finally te text that and I'm like, hey, uh, here's my situation. Like, uh, what's good? <laughs> can, can I get a refund or something? Or like, how, how the hell do I get out of here? Uh, I'm kind of stuck right now. Um, so, yeah, they're like, yeah, usually we don't do this, but we can uh, reschedule you on a flight for tomorrow. Um, and you just have to pay the difference, <laughs> which was double the cost of the flight. So that negated the whole fucking plan of going from Austria to Iceland to the, the U.S. by doubling the cost of the flight. Ah, but I was just like, man, what else am I going to do? I just have to have to do this. So uh, that's what's up. And they're like, yeah, you can't travel with those ashes. So, um, basically leaving me with uh, no choice. Um, so now I'm just like in the airport, just sitting there. And then by like 5, 6 p.m., it is empty. And now I'm like, well, what should I do? I mean, even before that, I was like, should I text Buddy? Should I leave the airport and see if I can hitchhike back to Reykjavik and stay with that guy again? Should I, um, I'm looking at places where I can camp near the airport because I'd heard sleeping in uh, Reykjavik airport is hard to do, but it turns out it wasn't. So I just decided that I would wait it out. And if I got kicked out, I would get kicked out. But sure enough, yeah, like I said, 6 p.m. It was just empty. Everything was closed. Uh, the little, you know, coffee shops and stuff. No people, no flights. Um, and I just sort of sat there and then finally laid down and uh, slept. And nobody bothered me, so that was lucky. No one was even cleaning the place. They don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, so somewhere in around 6, 7 a.m., people started coming in and... Um, yeah, now I'm just like, oh, shit. Um, I just hope there's no issues getting on the plane now. And I imagine I'm going to get searched again. I was kind of banking on that. Um, and sure enough, that is what happened. <laughs> uh, but these fuckers waited till like, the very last minute. So I'm just in this airport all, all night, obviously, like I said, and then all morning and early afternoon. And kind of boring, man. Um, but finally, around um, like 10 minutes before the flight was going to board, uh, now the airport's packed again. You know, there's been flights coming and going all, all morning, all afternoon. Yeah, and like 10 minutes before the flight's supposed to board, um, there's an announcement over the loudspeakers uh, saying my name to come to the desk. I'm like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Why? I've been here for 24 hours and you're waiting to now? Because I was like, oh, maybe I'm not going to have to go through all this shit so if i can go to the desk it's the dude from yesterday one of like the head of the tsa whoever he is i don't know smug looking security dude um so they bring me back to that same 
back room area into one of the little booths and they uh, take me to some girl and she starts doing the exact same process. I don't think she knew what was going on or that I'd been there before, but she's doing the same thing. Shoes off, electronics out, hit the power button. Uh, what do you got? Um, and as she's doing that whole routine, the main dude comes over and then asks me, he's like, do you have uh, the ashes still? And I'm like, no, I threw them out in the fucking bathroom garbage can. I threw my uncle in the garbage can, you fucking clown. <laughs> Why? He's like, all right, well, I'm going to come back with some people, and then uh, you'll be good. And I'm like, what time is it? <laughs> like, fucking flight's boarding, you know? Like, trying to get out of here. Um, so I'm sitting there, shoes off, just waiting. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and I'm just like... And then three cops show up, fully, like, <laughs> armored up or whatever, <laughs> which is kind of goofy. Um, but yeah, uniformed armored up cops and I'm like all right as soon as I saw the cops I'm like I'm done like I don't know if I'm going to jail that seems a little extreme I don't know if I'm gonna have to pay a fine but I mean the cops are here there's no way I'm making my flight <laughs> at this point. whatever they're gonna do like um this is not good and again I'm thinking like all right if you're gonna make a big freaking deal about this and do whatever you're gonna do why didn't you do this yesterday <laughs> like um, so the cops, yeah, they're there and they're asking me like, what happened? So I give them the bullet points <laughs> and they're like, well, where are the ashes? I'm like, I threw them in the trash, <laughs> fucking uncle that I'm named after. I just threw in the trash. <laughs> How about that? Uh, no sympathy, nothing, you know, uh, there's more, they're like, which trash? <laughs> I'm like, I'm fucking waiting for that question too. I'm like, uh, bathroom trash. Uh, near the Sparrow Pizza, <laughs> you fucking lunatics. Uh, and I go, okay, and like I tell their fucking gears were spinning, and um, they say some stuff in Icelandic to each other, and um, and eventually, yeah, they said the same thing about needing documentation, and and they were like curious how I got them there, <laughs> and luckily they weren't like they could have looked at my passport and just seen that I've been traveling all over the the world and stuff, but. Um, Whatever, I'm glad we didn't have to get into that. But they're, they're just like shocked that I even got my uncle to Iceland. And, you know, their assumption was I probably flew from the US a week ago, but still, I didn't want to be like, no, I've been to like, I don't know, 60, 70 countries with my uncle, like by land, by, by sea, by air. Um, no, didn't want to get into that. Uh, and finally, they just said, um, all right, well, have a nice flight. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, Started very quickly uh, putting my shoes on, like before security could say anything. I'm like, there were Trump's yours. <laughs> I'm moving. So I'm packing all my shit together. And um, yeah, just getting it together. And um, they put me back down to where the gates are. I race to there. Um, the last person on the plane, but I make it. And yeah, got on the plane. And I'm still not feeling safe, you know, after yesterday. So. Uh, we're delayed a little bit because there's like three people who had to transfer from a plane. So that's another five or ten minutes where I'm just sweating it out. And then finally we start taxiing and take off. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> I'm like, fucking out of there after being delayed for a day. And there's no way that I hid my uncle's ashes in my pants and didn't throw them in the trash. <laughs> no, there's no chance I would do something like that. Fucking animal. I can't believe they thought I just threw them in the trash. Like... And I, yeah, no sympathy, sympathy, no like, uh, yeah, no alternative option, like nothing, just like a bunch of clowns. Um, but yeah, so that was that little drama it held me up for a day. I was supposed to get into Baltimore the night before, but uh, yeah, whatever, moving on, you know. So six hour flight, um, long ass flight, um, just felt like it, just because of the all time at the airport. But uh, yeah, touchdown into the good old U.S. of A. And I was still a little bit concerned even when I landed because I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's still things can ha that can happen. And they did. They did happen a little bit, but it was okay. Uh, you know, I got off the plane, got through passport control real easy. Uh, but then in the customs area, I once again got randomly selected for secondary selection going through customs, returning into the U.S. I'm like, God damn it. And I'm looking like, I got body scanners over here or shit. <laughs> um, but they just had me talk to some woman 
and I'm sure this is totally unrelated. I'm not positive, but I doubt they like called ahead and they're like, watch out for this guy. I think it was just bad luck twice in a row with the secondary screening stuff. Uh, luckily, she just asked if I had any like uh, agricultural blah, blah, blah. Um, put my bag through the x-ray and uh, that was it. And then all of a sudden I was in Baltimore. Good to go. Halloween night. Halloween night. So yeah, headed into the uh, thick of the city. The idea was to catch up with my cousin the next day, but uh, on my own the first night. So, so yeah, downtown Baltimore in the thick of uh, Halloween. Uh, just walking through. Oh, it's just kind of changing block to block. Um, trick or treaters and uh, people partying, stuff like that. Um, found a little beer bar. At that point, it was too late. The actual breweries were closed, but found a little beer bar and. Um, yeah, had a couple uh, Welcome Back to America beers, you know, and yeah, walked a ways to a little nature path. Even though it was Baltimore, I uh, found a place to camp pretty easy. This bird's going off behind me. <laughs> uh, yeah, camped out, and then, yeah, my cousin came and uh, scooped me up in the morning. He lives like uh, 40 minutes away from there, uh, so caught up with him for a couple days. Uh, the fam over there. That was pretty fun, and yeah, just like stoked to be in the area. I hadn't seen him in a, a while, so uh, a little brewery action. Had some tasty beers, and uh, yeah, just catching up in a pretty mellow, really. And the morning I was going to go, I wasn't sure where I was going to go. I had a couple different ideas down in North Carolina, um, and ended up... In Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, didn't realize quite how close I was to uh, State College, Pennsylvania, where I've got a friend I haven't seen in a couple years or something. And messaged her, and she was around. She's like, oh, you should come. So I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm super close somehow. So, yeah, my cousin dropped me off north of Frederick, close to where he lives, and hitched one ride from a little older guy to uh, Gettysburg, right over the uh, border into Pennsylvania from Maryland. And then this guy um, going to school to be a seminary or Catholic priest, basically. Um, he scooped me up. Super interesting guy, real cool. And he was just going out for a drive just to like clear his head. He's just like one of those guys who likes to you know hop in the car and go for a drive every now and again. So yeah, he's like state college. Uh, just popped it in the GPS. He's like two hours away still and didn't even flinch. He's just like, whatever. Yeah, so he just... Drove me two hours to State College for no reason other than just to do it. And we talked the whole way, just good conversation. Chatting about his school and stuff and uh, just other junk and uh, travel and blah, 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 everything else. And uh, dropped me off to State College. Uh, soon enough, I was at a brewery meeting up with my friend. She's a Bulgarian girl I met in Amsterdam at a Nomad house some years ago. And we had stayed in touch. She had a... Uh, She'd been in that house longer than most, so she'd been like meeting all these like hitchhiking types, but never hitchhiked herself. And when I was there, first meeting her, uh, she wanted to hitchhike somewhere, and I was down, and the timing worked out, so we hitchhiked to Germany. That was her first little hitchhiking experience. So yeah, we've just been in touch since then, and I've seen her in uh, Atlanta when she lived there, um, Florida a couple years ago when she was there, and uh, yeah, now here in uh, State College. So. Pretty chill. And yeah, just been here for a couple days, kicking it with her, um, hanging out. The uh, big US election was yesterday, so there's like some excitement down there by the campus the other day, stuff going on. And yeah, I think we're about to go on a hike here soon. And tomorrow, I'm thinking, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I'll get going somewhere. I've got a couple ideas, but. We'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's up with Iceland. That's what's up since Austria and getting back here to the States. Uh, let me jump into the outro and I'll tell you kind of what things are looking like going forward. All right, so yeah, that's how you uh, narrowly avoid getting stuck in Iceland. I can't, I can't believe how just like little of a shit they gave about these ashes, like, being thrown in the trash. They're just like, yep, okay, good. <laughs> That's where he belongs. Ah, these motherfuckers. 
They're like, what's your uncle's name? I'm like, Kenny, just like me. And they're like, oh, <laughs> motherfuckers. Uh, but whatever. Um, it all worked out, didn't it? One way or another. So, yeah, back in the U.S. And got some ideas for tomorrow where I might go. It's kind of all over the place. But Atlantic City is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Never been to Atlantic City. And it's, like, kind of close. Four or five hour drive away. So I'll definitely be going to North Carolina for a bunch of reasons. Uh, so that'll come next, but maybe I'll just go straight to North Carolina tomorrow. I don't know. Or in the next few days. <laughs> I really don't know. Just uh, going hour by hour, day by day here. Seeing what's good. Um, wind up out west by the end of the year, I'm sure. And yeah, that little uh, trip hopping collective. January or February. So like I said, stay tuned for the next episode. I will most likely be uh, revealing <laughs> revealing once I reveal to myself uh, exactly when that's going to happen. So that's the idea. Uh, yeah. Other than that, life is good. Um, check out that Magic Mind stuff. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, magicmind.com slash freestyle show. And use the code freestyle show 20 for 20% off. That's a good one. Jump on trip hopping, create an account. That's all totally free. And fucking A. Life is good. Travels are good. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll see you guys uh, here, there, or wherever. <laughs> I'm going to be all over the United States, that's for sure, for the next couple months. Uh, so, happy days, and I will see you down the road. With all my shit straight, I'll get my big